they paid any taxes. Yeah. Mm. Okay? And it, 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 did not, it did not come very cheaply. The government is supposed to do a very simple thing. Yeah. Incentivize. How do you incentivize? Build them sheds the other side. Don't even relocate them. The other side is a forest, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And Exercise. yet we know that sometimes when those sheds are supposed to be built, and we, of course we are keeping an eye on the procession heading to Parliament. That should be mm. Parliament Road in any moment from now, this year's for Treasury. Actually, it's right outside Parliament. Yep. This road will really be driving in there. As soon as that conversation begins, we'll cross over there. That's the CES for Treasury. Professor Juguna Dumu just about to table his budget in Parliament right now, any moment from now. But we know that when sheds are built, FCP Mokua, there's always resistance that the customers are not here. They're where we are. So how do you widen that tax base and yet it's a shifty economy, so to speak? You take the sheds where the customers like. You don't shift them from Gong Road. Exercise that land, which is government land, build the sheds, give incentives, let the people drive in as they go home. You look at China, what did they do? They, we go to China, Wanzhou, the sheds in uh, Foshan, where people buy furniture. The government, you must give infrastructure to those people. And don't try to go and tax them the following year or the third year or the fourth year. Leave them to thrive. Yeah. Okay, and then they see value that the government has given us the infrastructure. They have given us the power, cheap power, where we can be able to do our, you know, install our machines, fabrications and everything. Then start taxing them. What we are seeing here, quick fix proposals, 3%, 1%. But they are not going to collect these taxes, in my view. We must be, be you know, we must, uh, you know, plan long term, okay, by incentivizing, incentivizing this informal sector, so that we can be able to reap from them, after some three, four years. And that's what even the budget, uh, the parliament budget office is saying. This year we can incentivize the informal sector, bring them into the formal setups, and then you can be able now to register them for tax purposes. They'll be able to have bank accounts, fiscal locations. Then you can be able to collect the 3% that you, can co you want to collect from them. That's my view, Trevor. I want to stick on that theme of uh, spurring growth. We can still see the convoy of the uh, Cabinet Secretary for <coughs> Treasury slowly making its way into Parliament. This, of course, is tradition um, as they make that short journey to present the budget speech. But when you look at this bill, this budget. Um, and people have been asking, what is the purpose? What is the purpose? What is the purpose? And you look at the different elements of it. Oftentimes, a budget tries to stimulate something, change something, achieve something. From what you've seen, Diana, are you seeing the purpose? Is it coming out clearly? Um, in part, in part, yes. Okay. Um, because you, you can see um, a focus on education where we are seeing um, the Teacher Service Commission getting increased allocation to hire additional teachers and interns. Definitely um, our basic education, both 844 and CBC, has had a shortage of teachers. And, and so the continued investment in basic education um, comes out as a clear priority. Then. Um, this time we are also seeing the government focusing on agriculture, again by increasing their expenditure in that particular front, um, digital and IC 